Hey everyone, it's Lazy Fire, and this is the Hate the Player podcast. I am on with Interweb, or Arnold, and I'm also here with Three Toes. Uh, Arnold, you've missed the last couple podcasts. You've had, you uh, yeah, you, you didn't make it. I last wouldn't time. say he's been missing it, Bob. Oh, oh. <laughs> Why you gotta do a thing? Because, uh, oh, you know you, you have to throw in an office space reference whenever you can. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Arnold, you got drunk one week to the point where you could not actually comprehend what was happening around you. Uh, that was entertaining. I, I, I call that Tuesday, actually. Ah, uh, well. Yeah, good. That's, uh, that's always good. And uh, so last week we had a discussion, and it, just Three Toes and I. And um, for one, like I told you before we started, it actually started with, uh, or like by the middle section of the thing, we were ripping on Call of Duty Ghosts, even though we'd never played it, either of us. Uh, because <laughs> that's what you do. I, I think you mean COD 9, COD Harder. <laughs> COD 9. It's a fishing game. It's a it's deadliest <laughs> it, catch. It's it's kind of like I have played it, though, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> I played Modern Warfare, so I've probably played this game, technically. The the only thing I saw is the, the repeated animation from the end of uh, Modern Warfare 2. Oh, yeah, that was great. <laughs> so, Three Toes, have you seen that? Three Toes? Three toes. He's dead, Jim. Damn. Uh, so while he figures out he's muted, wait, wait for it. Signs of life. Um, so for the people who, for whatever reason, are listening to this and have not seen it, the one of the opening sequences of Call of Duty Ghost is actually shot for shot, if you eliminate a couple things, uh, exactly what the end of Modern Warfare 2 is. Like, no joke, person putting their arm around your, their neck and dragging you to a helicopter. Everything is the exact same. Even the times where uh, your character blacks out for moments. <laughs> shot for shot. So, uh, people are, of course, getting kind of upsy about this. I, I have to say, Modern Warfare 2 was probably the last Call of Duty that I really, really enjoyed. Just because it was so broken in all of the right ways. Oh, yeah. There were so many gimmicks that you could run that were, like, actually fun. Yeah, but yeah. My, 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 builds. my favorite was probably uh, playing newspaper delivery role play. <laughs> yeah. I would uh, get a riot shield and scavenger and run C4 with my riot shield. And I'd just hang out in the corner and toss out toss out a C4 at somebody. And they'd... They what the hell and detonated and and you could actually airburst C4, which oh, yeah. was wonderful, and gave a key and it was just great. Then one man army noob tubing and uh, oh yeah, those were good times. It was broken as shit, which was kind of fun if you were on the right side of the brokenness. Yeah, uh, yeah. Three Toes hasn't played a Call of Duty game since Modern Warfare, I think he said. Okay, can y'all hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I don't know what happened. Mike just stopped responding. Um, I actually never even played Modern Warfare. The only modern Call of Duty I ever played was Black Ops 1. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Oh. Wow. He, and even then, I borrowed that from someone. So. <laughs> oh, wow. So you're like the ultimate hipster. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I always play Wizardry 1 through 3. Uh, you fucking punks. Get out I, of 3. Yeah. I actually have only seen the last decade of video games on, uh, on my uh, LARP. Uh, website. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, let's break from Call of Duty chat because I've actually had complaints about that from uh, our, our from our viewer. And, uh, <laughs> Thanks, Mom. <laughs> yeah. By the way, Mom, stop telling me what to talk about. Uh, so let's... Uh, this is something we broached at the very end of the show last week, which is people complaining that DLC is announced before the game and that immediately after it's announced and the game's released and there's bugs, people start yelling, well, if they weren't working on the DLC, they'd have time to fix these bugs. Hmm. Uh, which, I wonder what game they're talking about. Well, it's not just that. It's not just Battlefield. It's every fucking game. It, it, any game that comes out and it has a bug... I was listening... You should go and listen to this week's Giant Bombcast uh, because they actually had 
uh, Brad Muir and Jeff Green on, two guys who'd worked in the video game industry for a long while. And they're talking about development meetings where they're going through the bug list and it's got to be fixed, got to be fixed. And then there's another category called known shippable, which is the bug is there. It's well known, but if they try to fix it, it may break the game in different ways. So Ooh. they'll ship the game with that bug knowing it's there and well, try to figure out how to fix it after it's been released. I mean, games are immensely complex now. They're not the simple <laughs> shit that they were in the past. It's not like it's a two-man team making a making a triple-A game. You yeah. know, this like 500 people. Hence all... why they're not on cartridges anymore. Yeah. I, I forget there was a uh, some some computing law that shows that the more manpower you put on a project, the longer it actually takes. Yeah, that's uh, it's the myth, uh, the the many hands myth, I believe. Yeah, something like that. But uh, which, it, uh, yeah, uh, but people but, don't get that. But the the other thing is that people don't seem to understand the division of labor in video games or really any other industry. Anytime I see somebody say, "Well, if they put more people into fixing bugs than they did into making maps," it's like, okay, there might be like three map designers, but there might be fifty programmers. You know, those three map designers don't need to go over there and help you out. They're Definitely. not going to help be able to help you out anyways because they're not familiar with the game code. They just know how to make maps. And it's like, people don't. Like, yeah, it's like having an electrician look at your toilet. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's actually the best uh, example I've heard of that. But it, it just absolutely drives me crazy. It's, you know, I have uh, to kind of paraphrase from my own uh, experiences. You'll have people who will call me up and ask me the process of making a specific part. And I will tell them, well, I don't know what that is. Hold on. Don't you have and... to ask him if it's double ended or vibrating first? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's one of those things. I, I don't have to worry about that too much. But uh, you get you get to this point where it's like, well... I have to check. It looks like it's just a piece of stock, but I might be a casting. Who knows? So you have to go and find these things out. And if you don't know immediately, they get really upset and they don't understand how you, the person who sells the part, doesn't know how the person who makes the part, who lives across the country from you and works across the country from you, how they actually go about the process. It, you know, there's a division of labor and they don't quite get that. And it's kind of weird. That you know, adults do not understand the division of labor. I uh, I take a, a little different angle from the whole thing. Uh, I, re I remember when I when I was a kid, video games cost sixty dollars, and they still cost sixty dollars. They haven't been adjusted for inflation hardly at all. I think they went up ten bucks like a decade ago. Yeah, honestly, that's pretty amazing too. Yeah, well, I mean, if you look, compare the inflation, look at gas. Look at gas. Gas went up from like ninety cents up to it's three twenty where I am. Yeah. Um, I mean, anything else? Uh, video games suggested for inflation should be like two hundred dollars. Well, in Australia they are, but <laughs> yeah. that's Australia. I actually, have to kill someone to to get it and bring in their still beating heart. Yeah, and I mean these games, and that's kind of what the uh, the issue DLC with some it. of these companies that fail or these studios that go under. You know, it's because, like, they closed uh, the company that made, oh, Danger Close, the company that made the Medal of Honor franchise, because they technically released two flops. And because That's those games game. were massively expensive, uh, even a million selling game can be considered a flop. So... I mean, any game that. where you can hamstring somebody who's prone, uh, that's, a, that's a game worth playing. Wait, what, what, what game was that? Was that Warfighter? Uh, Metal Warfighter? Oh, is that how you got your Battlefield 4 uh, <laughs> uh, no, extended? I didn't actually buy it. I played the beta, and it was really enjoyable. It was a nice little cross between uh, the Call of Duty arena shooter and uh, Battlefield. I mean, it didn't have vehicles, but it had uh, actual ballistics, I think. I don't think it was hit scan. Um, yeah, yeah. The boxes were different. Everything felt different. It, it was more of a cross between Team Fortress, I think, and uh, and Call of Duty and yeah. anything else. And it was fun. And instead of a knife, you got a hatchet. And <laughs> you came upon Oh, God, I remember that. Prone, uh, the animation for killing them would be a hatchet blow to their hamstring. And then when they turn over, you hatchet them in the neck. Sweet. 
Yeah. yeah. And you had unlockable beards. Yep, unlockable beards. And you could act, actually run around and hatcheting people was a pretty okay way to play. <laughs> Which, I mean, it was fun. It, it, I, I, I really liked it. I, I spent a fair amount of time on it. I don't, I don't remember why I didn't get it. I think that it's just what... I mean, this is kind of another problem in the industry at whole, I think, is whenever there's a big name game coming out, you can basically, if you're releasing something in that same time frame, you can pretty much forget about it. Yeah. Well, that's why they moved Watch Dogs back to next year was because they looked at Assassin's Creed and they looked at Watch Dogs and they decided that Assassin's Creed would probably do better now and Watch Dogs would probably do better in March. That was I mean, pretty much yeah, their official that, reasoning. That's smart. I, I mean, you don't want to release with a huge game. I, honestly, I'm surprised uh, Battlefield and Call of Duty released so so uh, close to each other. Well, didn't didn't Bad Company Two come out in the spring? Wasn't that a spring uh, release? I want to say yeah. I think. Well, here's the thing. Call of Duty's kind of dominated November since 2007, right? Uh, but the Battlefield guys, they're one of the developers actually. Uh, responded to somebody on Reddit and had his name like blurred out. I'm sure that guy's fired within a couple days. Uh, but he responded to somebody on Reddit asking why the game was so fucked. And he basically said that part of the reason was that EA would not allow them to ship any later than two weeks before Call of Duty. So all the even if they knew all these issues were there and some of these problems that they're seeing were there, uh, they still had to ship that two weeks before Call of Duty. They were not allowed to push it back. This date was set in stone like two years ago. They knew when Call of Duty was probably going to be released in early November. So they made them release it. And yeah, it, the game probably would have been better if they just said, screw it, we're going to miss Christmas. Because who's buying like that game? Uh, have you seen you guys seen the stats for that game right now? Uh a hundred and six thousand PC players versus like twelve thousand uh, PS4 players and like sixty to seventy thousand Xbox and then seventy thousand PS3 players. Like that was active at like two in the morning yesterday. So the PC is definitely the bigger market for that game right now. And right. Uh, you know, the, the, you're not buying a lot of people digital copies of a game for Christmas. <laughs> You know, we're, we're at that point. But I mean, I can I can only imagine because I'm, I'm 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 sure that's a complete 100 percent true story. I can only imagine the headaches that developers have to deal with in terms of their publishers. I and I think a lot of people don't realize that they're two completely different entities. Like it, it it's funny when you see kids complaining to EA about a bug in Battlefield when EA had nothing to do with the actual development of that game. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting that people don't get that. I was reading, but you have to understand, when EA owns a studio, they can sometimes force them to do stuff. Uh, and I'm not just saying EA, I should say a publisher. Right. But one of the good examples of that was with uh, Dead Space 3. I was I was reading this thing the other day where in Dead Space 2, after it came out, someone asked why there was no co-op in it, and the lead designer on the game said, well, co-op would completely ruin the Dead Space franchise, it would make it so it wasn't hard, you'd have to design everything around two people always being there, and that's not always the case. Uh, so what happens with Dead Space 3? Co-op. All the way through. <laughs> and that guy had his, his uh, answer to that co-op question like thrown at him so many times, he had to backpedal. But the reason why they did Dead Space 3 co-op was because EA did focus testing and wanted to appeal to a larger market. So they said, okay, you guys, uh, it's time for you to do co-op. You have to do co-op. You have to make the game co-op. So and they had I, to. To be fair, they, they did a pretty good job with it. I uh, I played through it first day and because I, I enjoyed the Dead Space franchise. I think it's a neat universe. I I I, I enjoyed it. it. The third one wasn't scary, but it was a good third person kind of survival not horror but like horror. almost years of war yeah that's the thing though the people who were they did this to appeal to a larger audience and the people who were the hardcore fans were going 
all right, we're we're done with this now that you guys clearly have no idea what you want to do with this franchise. They didn't buy the game. And then the people who they wanted to appeal to, for the most part, said, no thanks. We would rather play Gears of War if we're going to play, if you're going to give us Gears of War with two people. So they, people walked away from it. Yeah. So yeah. they would I mean, have been better I, off. It's hard. It's, it's hard to keep a, a franchise fresh and attract more people. It's, well, the problem is they don't they don't know when to not continue the franchise. Yeah, it's I mean it's the same thing with movies. I can't blame them, of course. I mean they're in the business of making money and making more games, but sometimes you just gotta you gotta pull the plug and say, "Yep, we accomplish everything we want to with with this cast of characters with this I think, franchise." I think the fear of the franchise is a, is a perfect example of that. I'm sorry. Yeah. What is the fear franchise? Yeah. First encounter assault recon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. I yeah, mean, that was great. I mean, it was it was scary. Like it, the little girl was creepy. I mean, it was it, it, it the story was interesting. It, I liked it. I really liked it. Right. And um, then the second one was just yeah, like just kind of janky. And the third one, I, I don't know, but I didn't play the third one. So. Yeah, not a lot of people played that third one. Uh, yeah, that's what I heard. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, I can understand where you're coming from on that. I actually only played the second one, and I watched people play the first one, and I was like, "Wow, the first one looks really cool." The second one, it's like a military shooter. They took out almost all the cool weapons. Or, all right, so you know the uh, that stake gun, yeah, whatever it is, the uh, the pin, whatever it is, gun, perforator or whatever they call yeah, it. Yeah, the perforator there. They have that in the game. It doesn't show up till like three quarters of the way through, and ammo for it is so scarce, and you're only able to carry two weapons at a time, that you're better off just leaving it somewhere, and just like, oh, I used it in one firefight. There's like five bolts for it. I won't see more bolts until the next time through, uh, or like two levels from now. So I'm just gonna drop it. Like you should never have a gun that you want to use all the time, and then have no reason or no ammo for it. Right, and that that's kind of what they did there. They're trying to make it a little bit more, uh, I guess you could say, balanced in terms of single player weapons. Yeah. But come on, you want to use the cool weapons. There's no good reason to take away the cool weapons in single player. So, yeah, yeah I mean, absolutely. But actually, the Fear franchise is hilarious to me because apparently the company that published the first game owned the rights to the Fear name after the first one came out, but Monolith went to a diverse, uh, another publisher, and so they still had the rights to the game and the universe, so they had to, they had to go to the internet, or they went to the internet to try to get people to uh, name the next game, which is why Fear 2 has the subtitle Project Origin, because uh, Warner Brothers reacquired the Fear name just before the game came out, <laughs> so, they, so they put it on the front, but the game was going to just be called Project Origin first. And, uh, yeah, fun piece of video game trivia right there. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they had that huge campaign that almost got completely invalidated by getting the license back for their game name. But, yeah, I, I can understand why people or publishers would ask for changes or different uh, settings or something like that for a game. But it just... A lot of the time, publishers, they look at these this market data and they go, oh, okay, this is what we need to do. But 90% of the time, it's completely wrong. Like they, they ask random people from the street, would you play this game? Instead of asking the audience, would you play this game? Yeah. So. I mean, if you and, ask a bunch of dudes what they think of uh, Steel Magnolias, you know, it's, you're kind of missing the audience. Okay, so so this is actually what I do for a living. Like I'm I'm a, a data analyst. I'm a data and policy analyst, and we do a lot of survey research. And the problem you run into is most of the time when you're conducting a survey like that, or you know, opinion poll, whatever, focus groups, you get people who are more interested in the subject at hand than just anyone so you get the people who are either really really happy about it or really really pissed off at it you kind of miss the middle so you get these two extreme opinions 
and it, I, it's it's the vocal mi- minority to put it to put it simply. You make you make one of those changes because oh, we've got all these people yelling that they want this. Well, they're the only ones yelling, but they're a really really small segment of of the population at whole. So you can oh. yeah you easily screw yourself over that way. Yeah. Well, that was when uh, I didn't get to play Battlefield Four until uh, Thursday, the week it launched. I had a couple minutes. And I was expecting the game to crash every two seconds. I was expecting it to uh, not function, to kick me out, and all this other stuff. And then I got on no problem. And I played like five games in a row, no no issue at all. And I was like, oh, okay. I was just seeing all the people complaining and thinking that that's all the people. Right. And yeah. That's... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Confirmation bias. Yeah. <laughs> I, th- I thought maybe you were going to say it didn't feel like a real Battlefield game because it wasn't buggy. Yeah, it still has its bugs. Honestly, I was just happy the no sound bug is still in there because that's the most battlefieldy bug I can think of. Right, three toes. <laughs> have you heard that bug? Um, I remember running into it in uh. That's a lie. You can't hear the bug. <laughs> no, I'm I'm talking about in. I can't remember if it was Bad Company Two or in Battlefield Three, to where it would sound like my character was wearing, you know, noise canceling headphones. I couldn't hear anything. Right. No, this is uh, this is a different thing. In Battlefield Four, when the game was first released, if you fired a specific weapon with a silencer on it, oh, the, the entire Q-Q, server would lose sound. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty damn effective silencer. Yeah, <laughs> silence the entire server, one shot. And then on uh, Golmud Railway or something, I I think uh, sound randomly cuts out. It, it, I notice it when I'm in a tank. Yeah, Rush, by the way, I played Rush uh, for... I like, didn't enjoy it at all. Yeah, Rush on Goldman is a complete clusterfuck. Don't do that. I, I've only played a couple Rush maps, and I mean, I just don't enjoy it like I did on 3. Yeah. I think like, obliteration... What, like, what's, what's different about it? What what kind of turns you off? I can't I can't put my finger on it, man. It, it It's not that the maps are bad, because cause they aren't. I mean, the maps are enjoyable. It's just... <sighs> I don't know if it's not enough vehicles or the balance. I, I, I haven't played enough of it to know why. I just I just don't have as much fun with it as I do the the con the conquest side of things. Yeah. And I know it, it I mean are you are you, really are you playing sense. with like friends or are you playing with people you know? Do you think it's just because uh, you're trying to play well, it on your own? Well, I I had a couple friends with me because uh the goon goon server is all conquest all the time, which I mean is usually okay, but you right. know, Sometimes you want to put in the button, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, uh, I, can't, I watch Trailer Park Boys, so every time someone says, know what I'm saying, I completely go. I just have to laugh at that. If you don't get that joke, you should go watch Trailer Park Boys. Uh, yeah, Rush Rush has its issues. Uh, Arnold, to speak to your point, I think the, the fact that I was playing the other day, and by the time I spawned in, uh, because it took me four minutes to load the map. Uh, the other team had four tanks, and they, we were defending. They were attacking. We had one tank. <laughs> it's like, what? The, how are we? How are we stopping them? What's going to happen here? And and that's been an issue since Battlefield Three. Oh yeah, I definitely. mean, if uh, back on uh, Nasher Canals, or as we affectionately call it, Nose Hair, um, if you were defending on Rush. You got a you got a Tunguska, which yep. is I mean God's gift to us, obviously. But but uh, they got a transport chopper, a scout chopper, two rib boats, and an Amtrak. Well, yep. the only thing that's going to take out the Amtrak is uh, engineers working together. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's not going to happen. So it was basically the easiest attacker uh, rush in the game, to say the least. But uh. I mean, and it's balance issues like that. You just look at it and you're like, who who balanced this? It's just. I think of the 360, a big part of that, though, was the fact that it was much smaller. And uh, because of that, like on PC, on PC, it's set up the same way. Oh, really? That's bad. Uh, Yeah. It's it's the same vehicle loadouts, too. There's not more vehicles. Yeah. Oof. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's not good. Um. <laughs> I mean, honestly, the only thing I'd like to see from Battlefield is um, 
have you guys uh, played any of the the Halos where uh, you could go into Forge mode and place vehicles and? Yeah, yeah, Halo three and on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, Battlefield needs that, where right. individual servers can set up their stuff, and oh hey, well I feel this map's unbalanced. I'm going to give this side a tank, you know. Yeah. Or, and I mean, yes, a ser- bunch of servers would ruin it, and it'd be terrible. But I mean, you'd you'd find that good server that would actually balance stuff out, and it'd be fun. Mm. But I think the real problem with Rush is is the real problem with any competitive multiplayer game. You have to have a balanced team. Yeah. If you don't have a balanced team, it's just a steamroll. And then the next round, when they're on defense, it's it's just hanging out at the other team's spawn, waiting. Oh, yeah. But on the other end of that, you have so many auto-balanced scripts that good luck playing with your friends. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hard issue to solve. Yeah, it's not easy. And I think people will argue balance for all time. Yeah. But balance, I find more and more when people start crying about it. Balance is always breaking things in the direction of the stuff you like versus the stuff that counters it. Cool. That's that's what people think balance is. All bolt actions should be a one-hit kill from a 1,000 yards. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then I'm going to say at the same time, well, bolt actions should be completely useless unless you know, you're know you scoped in from this far away or something like that. Right. And... No scope player. Give me my Wookiee suit. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, that's just, that's how that is with these multiplayer games. If you don't patch and balance the things that people complain about the most, or if you, like, l- let's look at vehicles, or let's say rockets right now. People complain so much about uh, how much damage rockets do. Oh, wow. it should do more damage here. Cool. This this thing should do more damage. This one should do less damage. Uh, you know, on and on. Uh it's like, well, it's actually pretty balanced right now because if you can score a hit on the back of a tank, you can more or less kill it in one shot. It'll yeah. actually take two it, shots, it, it, but it's... You totally immobilize it with enough time for you to reload your RPG and kill it. Yeah. And it's just... Um, what, 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 I think it's perfectly balanced, honestly, because um, RPG and Smog can get those criticals... Small is better from a little farther away, even though if you're used to the RPG, RPG is still amazing. Um, the starting launcher, I really like. I really like it, especially if you have a guy, a support guy that can keep giving you ammo. Oh, yeah. I, uh, there were two other two engineers in my squad and me and one support, and we were all hanging out near his ammo box, and we locked down a spawn by ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> because, number one, you just have to shoot in the general general area of the tank, and the law just kind of oh, zooms in, 21 damage. <laughs> Number two, it reloads so fast that you can just spam it. And if you have a couple guys doing it, it's you could buy a vehicle. Like, people were pissed. Yeah. I mean, it's really effective. I, I really hope every time you kill someone with it, you range yell out in the RPG or the small. I, I really hope when you kill someone with it, you yell out, out in a Sylvester Stallone voice, I am the law! Yeah, that's the best idea you have. I generally say stuff like that all the time. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, they the thing is, every launcher has its place. You know, law the law is good from far away, and, it, yeah, it takes a lot of shots to kill something. Yes, it doesn't get locational damage, but... It's not meant for up close. It's a far, it's a long distance. Uh, you just have to hit within like five yards of it, and it hits. Yeah. I mean, it's baby's first launcher, which is what it should be. Nice Somebody... compromise between the lock on and whatever. The straw, the straw gets the locational damage, uh, but you have to stand still and base it one more or less, and uh, guide it in. Mm. Ah, that's what she said. <laughs> and then you have your RPG, which is the most damage, and it's not as good at range. You have to, you really have to know what you're doing, but it rewards skill. The the small, a little less drop, but a little less damage. I mean, there's something for everybody. So people bitching, I I, I think they're really off base. Now, yeah. just just with the cursory glance on the thread, somebody was saying that boats seem pretty broken too. 
Oh, both the are amazing. Boats. Yeah, they, they oh, both probably is a little broken, but I love it. I got all my like. like is it one match? If that tells it, you what how broken it is. Is it like Bad Company Two Vietnam boat broken? I never played. I haven't played a battlefield before three since uh, Desert Combat. Oh, so I, I got don't you. No. Okay. Um, yeah, that, but, that thing could take I, down I, anyone and everything. I'm in a boat. I went like 57 and two. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty disgusting. Oh. And, I mean, I just had guys on the minigun and a guy repairing and had my thermal vision on halfway through the match. <laughs> and you just kill everything. The 30 millimeter cannons, disgusting. Um, tow launcher or the rockets. I mean, it, it's amazing it's it really i don't but the thing is i don't know if it's overpowered or not i think they just need to make it so that launchers maybe do a little more damage to it because as it is the law i think only does like nine damage or something five it's five it's five (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah i think i think if you make the launchers do a little more damage to it then yeah, but the thing is, it's a boat. Yeah. It, it, like, the naval forces are supposed to be kind of, uh, I guess, overpowered, you know? Mm-hmm. It's not, uh, it, I don't know. And if a tank gets a hit, hit on it, it's a mobility hit, and it can kill it. I mean, I, I, I don't know if I'd say it's overpowered. And it's, I mean, it's not like you can ride up onto every single point and capture with a boat. Exactly, exactly. Uh, maybe on Paracel, Storm, or whatever. Holy shit, yeah. If you're playing that Conquest Large, there's a boat at every point, I think. Um, <laughs> no, two boats at each spawn, and then A, I think, has a has another boat that whoever captures can spawn on. Yeah. It, it's crazy. If you lose your boats? Oh, man. Oh, oh man. Yeah. If someone steals your boat, you are fucked, because that thing, yeah. It, it's, yeah, it's, basically better than a tank i think i've seen a few boats take out uh lavs at the very least uh going from sea to land yeah uh, oh yeah no no the boat will uh, destroy an lav easily oh yeah so yeah i mean the, i really like the boats uh i like being in them because most of the time they're damned invincible uh yeah. but i mean it, i think it's an easy fix you just make launchers do more damage to them and then i think that kind of solves the problem I think a big part of this is that the uh, the boats are definitely supposed to be boat to boat combat or boat to vehicle combat. They're probably not balanced towards individuals on the shores firing at them, which is kind of a big problem because those things are basically going to destroy infantry in like two shots. Which it's a boat; it yeah. should. Yeah. So if you want to get people to like fire on those guys, uh, you know you got problems. Of course, you can throw C4 underwater, so why not just uh, go underwater and throw some C4 I, on and Honestly, I'd get killed <laughs> as a boat with that, and it, tell you what, I bet that recon felt like a stud. Oh, yeah. That's are there, are there water mines? No. Oh, oh God. Oh, why, would you, why would you give DICE that idea? <laughs> Shit. No, That's no. probably coming in the, uh, the all-naval <laughs> map pack. Uh, for, yeah. those, for those uh, that, that, that don't know me, I'm... Uh, uh, nothing makes me swear or cry harder than uh, claymores or uh, anti-tank mines. Okay, so yeah. all this talk about boat combat has me thinking, and I cannot remember the name of it to save my life, so somebody please tell me. What was the name of that damn TV show with Hulk Hogan and the other guys where they had like, it was like Night Rider boat. They had like a boat that was like Night Rider, but it was a boat, and it took place in like the Florida Keys. Oh, uh, it's geez. actually called Three Toes is Old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know That's... you watched it. Damn it. Tropic, really, Tropic, Tropic, Tropic really Thunder. Really no, Tropic Tropic Thunder. Thunder. Was it was Tropic Thunder, you're right. I thought that was the movie with Ben Stiller. No, I think it, it actually had... I think that was actually the name of it. It was Tropic something. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. I saw an episode <laughs> of it, but... can't think of what it actually is. I need to put that boat in the game. Mm, that'd be great. <laughs> Talks to them. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, the uh, have you guys seen anything about the PS4 Battlefield 4? Nope. 
uh, conquest mode is bugged. You can't play it. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. <laughs> I've read that the streaming is a pretty neat feature for consoles. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, you it, stream yourself sitting in a menu. <laughs> I want to play Rush, or I can play Rush, but I don't want to. I mean, if you're not playing Obliteration, uh, I feel kind of bad. I've stepped into some Conquest games where it's just complete domination, uh, because Conquest, at this point, if you have a majority of the flags, the ticket drain is fast. It is real fast now. So, yeah, which like it before, should be. I mean, if, it, if you have all the flags... It's not fun. It's not yeah. fun for the team losing. It's not fun for the team winning. No. It's just not fun, period. I I always said that uh, they should make it once you five cap or have all the flags, that after maybe a minute or so you can run in and cap their spawn. Mm. Yeah, that'd be pretty neat. But I, I think it's a nice change. But at the same time, uh, if you come in and your team loses, your team's losing, you have less of a chance to come back. And I mean... We've been in games where we've been triple capped, where in Metro, and uh, we've been able to come back and take all three flags and win. I mean, there's just a lot of uh, potential there. Oh, and honestly, that's the one thing I miss about uh, playing on 360 with the smaller player count, the uh, the 12 on 12, is that I remember uh, we would roll around. There would be maybe four of us together as a squad, and we'd triple cap one way and then switch ourselves to the other team and triple cap the other way. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, and you don't really have that sort of impact uh, on, on PC with the 32 on 32 just because sheer numbers. But uh, that I would say that's the, that's the one thing I really do miss because you had a much bigger impact. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the, yeah, that's the exact issue. But I think, like expecting, expecting people to keep playing that that twelve versus twelve stuff forever is kind of insane in a battlefield game. Oh no, you're uh, right. You're right. I'm just saying it's that, complete that's complete desert. That's about it. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. Uh, but real quick, if we want to get on to other topics, I don't know if you guys are ready to leave Battlefield Four, considering one of us hasn't even played it yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So yeah, three times. It'll be space, it'll be several there. months before I play it. Yeah, once oh. they release a console that's worth getting it on. Yeah, it's oh. and actually, um, if y'all wanna if y'all wanna kind of discuss this, a uh, a buddy of mine was tweeting earlier today talking about how what was it Sony sold like a million units of the PS4 in one day, mm -hmm. and wondering if if Microsoft would would even come close to that number. Well, apparently Microsoft took the uh, Nintendo and Sony PS3 stance on this stuff and released fewer units uh, so they could say all the pre-orders were sold out. Mm. So, like, I I've seen reports of people who work at GameStop who are like, yeah, uh, there's a bunch of available Sony units, but we only got, like, five Xbox uh, Ones, so those are all gone already. Stuff like that. I mean, well, I've also heard the... Well, he said he heard that they were diverting units from the UK or the, you know, Europe back to North America. Which is weird because what everything I've heard is that Europe is the battleground this time around. So people are going to be focusing there. And that just seems weird that they'd move units from Europe to the America. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they're just... Yeah, I don't, to... I don't know. This is all third-hand knowledge for me. Yeah, but it's it's going to be great. I want to see what happens with the 360, or Jesus Christ, the Xbox One, the 720, the X, whatever it is, Xbox Three, uh, because I think that they've they shot themselves in the foot with so many people who would, you know, normally be really into the console with the Kinect stuff and all the stuff that they went back on, mind you. So everything that they've said about, oh, the Kinect will be required, you have to have it plugged in at all times, uh, they've gone back on that and they said, okay, no, you don't need to do that now. And all the other stuff about game sharing and all that crap, that's gone. Yeah. So they basically went and matched Sony's policies, which was probably smart because Sony got a fucking standing ovation when they announced that you could turn your games back into the store. Not to mention the smug expression on the guy's face when he said it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, just it, it was clear that 
Microsoft had a vision of the future, and it was not a vision anyone who played video games shared. <laughs> it was yeah, very it, clear that that was not it. Uh, uh, it's, it's interesting now. Valve is trying to do some of that stuff. They're trying to do a game share system. Uh, yeah, but, but they're not trying to be dicks about it. Yes, exactly. It's not like, oh, you're in game share, so only you can use this game. You're buying a license, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, you have a game. You can opt into the share program. If you try to play the game, you kick somebody else out, blah, blah. It, it, it runs on. Yeah. So, but Microsoft had to step back on almost everything. But I think the general public, the people who are buying these consoles are not the people who are going, oh man, I thought that that was a major misstep. They're the guys going, but I can watch football while I play Halo. I'll be able to hit pause on Halo and watch football, and then on the commercials, I'll go back to it. Uh, hey, more more power to them. I mean, I was all about the Xbox One until... Uh, I can't put my finger on it, but I remember there was a, a, a Microsoft executive or somebody with Microsoft who basically Marie Antoinette it and said, oh. <laughs> basically, if, the, if you don't have internet... Why are you somewhere that has better internet? That was uh, Josh Olin back uh, back when he worked for Microsoft. He was quickly fired after that. Yeah, um, yeah, and, and it, honestly, that that kind of summed up Microsoft's uh, Microsoft's attitude to me because I had had an issue with uh, with Xbox uh, Live or something. I, I can't remember. It was something like two years ago where I called and I. And I basically, fuck, I, I it, there was a, I got double charged or something, mm -hmm. and with with Microsoft, and I was trying to get to get it set right, and I explained to them, I'm like, I've spent probably three thousand dollars between new games and and it, peripherals and Xboxes. Mm -hmm. I'm like, it, it'd be nice if you could, I don't know, maybe maybe help me out here. And it was basically, uh, yeah, we're Microsoft. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> yep, that seems to be the case with a lot of stuff now. But Microsoft. Can't remember what it was, but it was some legitimate. Then, it, it, oh fuck, what was that? Well, doesn't matter. Microsoft's in the Sony seat, where where Sony was last time. You know, Microsoft was. They had the strong f showing at the start. We're we're of course ignoring Nintendo because they're not competing in the same realm. <laughs> these other consoles are which, which is, is to say usable things with which is games. Alt, which is beyond disappointing for me because i was the biggest nintendo fanboy growing i mean that's my child I mean, we all were yeah yeah no one likes sega fuck them well no i i, I, I had, had i had a I genesis had a i had a genesis and a super nintendo because mm, yeah it's middle class mm. oh i had yeah. a master uh, system oh go ahead three toes I said i had a master system Whoa! I didn't know it was until that was a decade very fucking OG thing. as shit. <laughs> it is yeah. I had all the Sega stuff. My brother had all the Nintendo stuff. So uh, technically, we had both. But yeah, I was very much Sega growing up. Yeah, yeah. I had a Sega Genesis until uh, six months after my parents bought it, when the any controller plugged into the first player port d decided that going right was impossible. Guess what most games on the Genesis required you to do? <laughs> so I could go left. I could play Sonic 2 if I wanted to go left the four feet it allows you to go. But going right was impossible. So, um, yeah, that, that was how long I had a Genesis and then I got a SNES. And that was kind of like a return to form because I had a Nintendo before that. Right. Oh God. Super but yeah, I mean, probably the best, uh, best console ever. Mm-hmm. We, do we do we want to touch this? <laughs> I think it goes between the SNES and the PlayStation. Yeah, uh, but that the PlayStation argument always falls back to two games that I absolutely fucking loathe, which are Final Fantasy VII yeah. and Metal Gear Solid. Uh, and uh, so I, I didn't loathe Metal Gear Solid. I just didn't see what the I get. Like I I played through it, and we didn't have a memory card. So, <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, we left it on. one sitting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You and, either play it for twelve hours or you don't play it. Yep, that's right. That's and we played through it, and I mean, I liked it, but it, it, I didn't see what the big deal was. I guess. Yeah. And I think that's like most things that that are really really hyped. Um, 
but for me, with the Super Nintendo, like you've got my favorite game of all time, Secret of Mana. Um, oh God, Super Metroid, uh, Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past. I mean, shit. I, I, <laughs> I mean, that, that's when like Street Fighter and all the. All oh that. yeah, Street Fighter Two Turbo. That's the last all real the fighting game started I hitting the consoles. Yeah, I mean, it, it was just a number one. It was a good age. It was a good era for gaming. And number two, it, it, maybe it's because there weren't as many options or, or whatever. But it, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm probably looking at it through nostalgia. But no, no, I'm not because I just played through Super Metroid again, probably last year. Because it's good and it was a beautiful game. It still is a beautiful game. Those uh. Those 16-bit graphics really hold up pretty well compared yeah. to the like PlayStation, like uh, Final Fantasy VII. Oh my God, Cloud is a block. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's they were really trying to figure out 3D graphics at that point. Oh, you right. can't fault well, them for that in a lot of regards. I'm just saying they they don't hold up as well as the as the as the uh, two-dimensional, like, sprite. Oh, of course not. And it's always creepy when they were trying to uh, insinuate people were talking with voiceovers and their mouths don't move or are just lines on their faces. <laughs> yeah. That's always weird. Right. But, I mean, uh, that's limitations, and Sony was clearly, or the companies making these games were clearly stepping right outside the limitations of what they could do. Hmm. I th- I think the PS2 was kind of, I think the PS2 actually has to be brought into the conversation about best game consoles. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think the PS2 is the only other one that could probably have a fair shot at that. It's yep. either the PS2 or the uh, Super Nintendo. Yeah. Yeah, that's I mean god, they were still making games for the PS2 after the PS3 came out. Yeah, for can for a while, a couple of years after. They just I think they made uh, another FIFA game in 2010, that was it or something like that. Because, like, people in the developing world are still getting these games and these systems. Right. So that's what they want to play is, like, FIFA and shit. Although, although there was, this is how long the PlayStation 2's longevity was. In 2008, they released a version of Call of Duty World at War for the PS2. The PlayStation 3 was a year old at that time. Hmm. And uh, apparently, from everything I've heard about it, that that version of the game was fucking horrible. I think you know what your next next play, what your next let's play is going to be. Oh, I actually told people that I am not doing any more Call of Duty games ever, and that's actually accurate. Oh, you you should go back and do a PS2 World at War. <laughs> I don't have a PS2. Anymore. I have to say, I really emulate it World at War, World at War uh, campaign. Mm. It it was more. It had more soul to it. It was ca- almost campy, the, like with the metal and the, uh, the, the, I mean, the music. The just it was over the top in a good way. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, Gary Oldman was a Russian guy, and I like him. Yeah. By the way, Arnold, have you completed the campaign for Battlefield Four? Yes. Yes, I have. The section with Dimitri helping you out of the prison. Yes, I thought I was playing. Uh, um, Black Ops. World of War. Or I thought Black I was playing Black Ops, Ops at that point. Yeah. Like a Russian dude from the last game's helping me out of a prison. This is weird. Yeah. Um, yeah, which is going to be fun. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the the World at War wasn't a terrible game. It just wasn't up to the. It was so the story behind World at War, and God damn it, we said we weren't going to talk about Call of Duty, but this is a fun story. Uh, back when. Infinity Ward wanted to make Modern Warfare, the first game. Uh, They came to Activision saying they wanted to do that. And Activision said, well, we'll let you do that, but if you want to develop for consoles, you'll have to make another World War II game and we'll give you the console development kits. So they thought this would do better on consoles anyways, so they said yes, and they uh, went out and made World War II Call of Duty 2 instead of going into the modern era that year. So they got their development consoles and they got the go-ahead to make Modern Warfare. Uh, then Treyarch worked on World uh, Call of Duty 3. It was not well-received. Uh, no, it they was were, terrible. 
I remember yeah. it. Yeah. So as soon as they finished with uh, Call of Duty 3, they were told, okay, you're going to make Call of Duty 5. And, you know, it's going to be in a similar vein. You're going to do World War II again. Uh, because we don't fully trust Infinity Ward to make a hit game, but we like the franchise. So Infinity Ward does all this work, makes a, a new revision to the Quake engine uh, for <laughs> Modern Warfare. <laughs> one of many. I, yes. I, I, I got to say, Call, Call, of Duty, Call of Duty 2, I remember that was one of the first games I played on the 360 when it came out. And I'm like, holy oh, yeah. crap, this game looks great. It did. It really does. It, like, you know, it's a good game. I, I mean, too. And with Infinity Ward and uh, Treyarch trading off, like Treyarch started at shit and Infinity Ward started really high level. And it seems like with each uh, subsequent release, Treyarch has gotten better and Infinity yeah. Ward has gotten worse. Yeah, well, Infinity Ward had that whole thing where everyone left the company. Uh, yeah. Anyone of note left the company. But the, yeah, the Treyarch basically got to make World at War because... Activision didn't trust that a modern shooter would actually do well. Look how wrong they are. Like, yeah, <laughs> oh man, like people are actually taught. I, I, I saw, I was reading one of the uh, threads on SA, um, and <laughs> people are like, man, I never thought I'd ask for another World War II shooter. They should, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't mind another one. Yeah. Something that I mean, change it up, but I mean, with like real, uh, Real quote unquote next gen graphics. <laughs> <laughs> I want realism. I want to manually reload my Mazen one bullet at a time. Yeah. Well, it, I, I'd love to see it come about the same way the modern shooters came about, which was um, the guys who developed Desert Combat off of Battlefield 1942. Like, having right. to do the same thing, take Battlefield 4, find a way to turn it back into a World War II shooter. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Desert Combat. Oh, man, that game was so much fun. Holy crap. Yeah, it's just... I feel like we've kind of moved beyond World War II shooters at this point. It was fun for the decade where they were the only type of shooter you could make. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I, and I think I that's a concession to the real world where you couldn't really say, okay, we're going to make these guys bad guys now. Right. Uh, but the Nazis were a very easy target to make bad guys. So they had a, a ready and willing enemy and they didn't have to go sci-fi. They could base it on real world stuff. Right. Uh, but I think we've moved kind of beyond world war two stuff. Now I think the last, the last world war two game I can remember coming out was like medal of honor airborne. And that did very poorly. Oh man. I I'm tired. Yeah. I can't, yeah. I can't remember anything more recent than that. Well, you got the red orchestra games. Yeah, I guess. I, I'm saying like a massive first-person shooter franchise. Yeah, like AAA. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Red Orchestra is its own beast. Yeah, kind of a kind of a niche thing, I'd say. Yeah. But, but uh, <sighs> that's yeah. I mean, that's the reality of it. I think they uh, honestly. Uh, I see. I've seen a lot of people clamoring for uh, like a t Battlefield 2143. That'd be kind of cool. I'd love it. Or going on, going more near future type stuff. Well, yeah, this game takes place in like 2020. It's a Battlefield 4. Yeah. So think about that near future. Oh, God. That's that's uh, the, the, don't even get me started on that campaign. Oh, it's not like God. it was bad, but it just it was just no, it was bad. Boring. It was just boring. Yeah, I was relating I mean, a story. Even to Omar three couldn't save it. Like I I love Omar coming. I I. I, I <laughs> I love I love the, the uh, but it just uh, he was just. Gotta save all these how, people. How, how, okay, how do you turn Omar into a bitch? We gotta save him. Pack, pack. Where are you, pack? The entire yeah. fucking what? campaign. You're the squad leader, but I'm going to lead the squad. Hey, yeah. Hey, squad leader. We should do this, should we? And then the the best part was that on the ship on the way back, everyone was giving you shit about that. And then Pack is like, you got to take command. Your character is silent the entire game. Yeah. <laughs> you make <Yeah>. one decision. <laughs> so, yeah. Sorry for spoiling the epic uh, Battlefield 4 story for you. Well, now I'm, not, now I'm not even going to buy it. Everybody dies. I'm not going to play Battlefield. Ruined us. Snape kills Dumbledore. 
I'm Snake. not even going to get a console. Snake kills Dumbledore. Is actually It was a <laughs> dream. Rosebud is a sleigh. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you what happens in Game of Thrones. Uh, <laughs> Sean Bean's dead. He's gone. <laughs> the entire time. It's actually yep. six cents. Uh, yeah so i mean it's just that's battlefield 4's campaign it was poor we knew it was going to be poor it's seven missions long it should take you about five hours to complete not really impressive but the thing is you get god's gifts gift a man out of it which is the p90 oh well i've heard that's not great i got the 249 out of my playthrough and i feel pretty good about that choice uh, all you have to do is replay the uh the uh, last level yeah but fuck why would i do that scene. that last level sucked hard yeah i'm like why are we on this boat rushing towards towards a a chinese ship in 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 the panama canal no it was the suez, the suez canal suez which canal. i don't understand how they got there yeah I'm so confused. They um, apparently trailed like six Chinese destroyers on them. Yes, and you parachute <laughs> onto the deck of a moving ship. Yes, yeah, okay. Ugh. Ugh. Our math is good. Um, it just, uh, fuck. Yeah, they didn't really try. They just had to get, they probably put these scenarios on there that they had to have, and that's what they went with. Duh. So, don't feel too bad. But the, uh, Last thing before we wrap this up, because we are approaching the hour mark of recording. Uh, we're actually, we've passed that, but the hour mark of this podcast. Um, what have you guys been playing lately? I know, Arnold, you said you haven't really been playing much. No, no, I, I've uh, been doing real life stuff. Yeah, fuck so that. I haven't, I haven't played much. So last, last I played, I did, did I mention this last time? I, I think I was drunk the last time I mentioned it, but the Stanley Parable was a lot of fun. Yeah, you were I, drunk, but you mentioned it. Yes, it, 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 I really enjoyed it. It's a fun single player experience. I would wait until it's maybe uh, ten bucks or so, mm. but uh, definitely, definitely worth it. It's a, it's a different first person kind of exploration. Yeah, I've heard it's interesting in a lot of ways. Uh, Three Toes, yeah, you've been doing anything? Uh, still just still just Grand Theft Auto Online for the most part. I uh, I got stuck in a bad sport lobby for the last two days. <laughs> you want or to explain no, what that no, is? That was um that was um when was it like Wednesday Wednesday and Thursday? I got out of bad bad sport lobby. Bad sport uh, lobby. Friday. Yeah, explain so, what that is. It's okay, amazing. so. <laughs> It's it's really weird because the game centers around, you know, cheating, stealing, murder, destruction, blah blah blah. But they don't want you ruining other people's fun, so you can accumulate what they call bad sport points. Um, and it it doesn't seem that if if you just run around killing someone that that doesn't really punish you at all. It actually ups certain abilities and and unlocks like you you get certain unlocks for so many player kills, whatever. But if you destroy someone's personal vehicle, like you don't just I mean, you can you can run around stealing any car you want, but you can also take it to the shop, um, put like a theft device on it and put insurance on it. So if the cops impound it or if it gets destroyed somehow, you can call up the insurance company on your phone and then it spawns at the insurance company building. You can go pick it up. But if. If you blatantly destroy someone else's car, you you accumulate these bad sport points. Um, and again, I, I mentioned this last time, Arnold, you weren't here. Uh, there's ways around it. Like one of the one of the weapons is a jerry can full of gasoline. You can pour that all over someone's car and leave a trail. If you shoot it to ignite it, that's deemed like a player action. You destroy the car, you get bad sport points. However, if you go up with like one of your custom cars with a modded out exhaust system and engine that'll, you know, do a little flame out of the exhaust, use that to ignite it. You can blow up people's cars all day. You don't get awesome. bad some more points. Yeah. I've also I, I, I got really pissed off because you can smoke cigarettes in the game, but dropping a, a cigarette into the gas trail does not ignite it. Oh. It's like, are you kidding me? You can't do that while walking away from the car. No, I wanted to do that so bad. <laughs> but, 
So anyway, you accumulate too many bad sport points. You get sent to a bad sport lobby to where you cannot play with anyone else who is not a bad sport. Everyone wears a dunce hat around, <laughs> which is kind of pointless anyway because you're all in the same lobby. You know your your bad sports. Um, you can't take it off until you know your time's up or you're forgiven. And um, it's 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 kind of a barren wasteland. Like you can't so, play with your friends. You can't even just do regular like non free roam missions so, or races without your friends. So I take it that your personal car is is perpetual. It stays with you unless it, unless you insure it, right? So like if, if let's say I'm driving this car, it gets blown up. That car is gone unless it's insured, right? Right. Oh wow. But but I mean just just even just driving it into your garage when you if you decide to actually purchase an apartment and garage which are insanely expensive and you have to grind out a lot of money unless you just glitch the money in like it it automatically insures it for you. Oh. So it's it's really not hard to you know keep track of your personal vehicle and even then the person who destroyed your car has to pay you know the insurance premium like a thousand bucks or whatever and it depends on you know what the car is, how expensive it is to insure it. Well, so, like, you're already getting punished by, you know, money getting taken out of, out of your account. But by... Isn't the point to, to just run around and kill people, though? Yes, but apparently Rockstar doesn't see it that way. They think pe- oh. a lot of people just want to run around in free mode and just hold hands all day. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <coughs> but again, there are ways around it. And, like, for, for the longest time... Like you, you can kind of get rid of your bad sport points by playing missions or doing races, just like normal game activity. So for a good while, I had races? I had a really good balance going, to where I would destroy you know two or three cars, you know in a lobby, go do a couple of races, and it would just give me warnings constantly. I finally kind of pushed it over the edge because one kid just he uh he spun me out. Like, I don't know, he didn't spin me out. He started going the wrong way on a race, and I was in first place, and he knocked me out of first place. Mm. So when he left the race, I jumped into his lobby and just kept repeatedly destroying his car. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, you yeah, up that. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> because to the couch because you, the mirror. Well, it's, it's fucked up because you unlock mods for your car by winning races oops so if you want to you know it, it's one of those things where the rich get richer the guys with the super modded up cars are gonna you know foreseeably win all these races and you're kind of stuck with a, a shitty unmodded car until you can somehow find a way to win right so or you just spin people out and get yelled at by people think of putting a lobby for it yeah yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's that's annoying. I think there's. I, I want to say that there's got to be a good reason for something like that, and I can understand. Like, if some people want to just play around, and you're being a dick to them. Yeah, sure. A lobby for people who want to be dicks to each other. That's fine. Make that an option. Make it an option that you want to play like <laughs> Anarchy mode or yeah. Law and Order mode or something like that. Yeah. I, don't, yeah. Actually, well, actually it, it, oh god. Well, I was going to say, there's there's other ways around it, too. Like, I think I mentioned this last time. Like, you can go into passive mode to where, in <laughs> on paper, no one can kill you. And you can't kill them if you're in passive mode. And again, it costs you money to get into passive mode. It's like Oof. either 100 or 500 bucks to get into passive mode. But it's it's kind of buggy to where something happens where if you get in a car they can just explode the car and kill you <laughs> um they can run you over repeatedly it granted it takes like 10 times of them running you over to actually impact kill you when you're in passive mode that's but even awful. then like that's that's kind of broken um but it's red dead red dead redemption was like that where there were entire lobbies to where it was you know they called it friendly to where there was no PvP action. It was just people who wanted to roll around, do the gang hideouts, and and stuff like that. So I'm I'm pretty curious as to why they didn't, you know, do that again. Hmm. Instead, just have lobbies for the people who are being dicks. I hmm. I actually forgot to mention I have been playing a game with my uh, with my kids. 
uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Yeah, yeah. Which, which is still a really fun game. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you can't actually get on Xbox Live with it anymore, but it, it's it's fun. And yeah. I can drink all of my kids' tears. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I actually got it on Steam so I could play it whenever I wanted, and I played it like three times on my old computer. Mm-hmm. Because it was so old, the game is so old itself that uh, my my crappy laptop could run it perfectly. <laughs> so, are you no, playing I... it on your uh, 360 three-way or four-way split screen kind of thing? Yeah, yeah my son is a, a screen-looking son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> But he's, Kid, you don't need to go to college anymore. Just like his dad was when he was that age. Yeah. <laughs> I've taught well, you all we I know. do that in Goldeneye. All yeah, the time. I was just going to say, oh my God, yeah. Yeah, me and my friends playing Goldeneye. But we all, like, it was me, my buddy, his older sister, and then uh, uh, his little brother. And we would all just gang up on him. Oh, <laughs> oh. Shit, man. And we'd make him be Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's mean spirit uh, as hell. That's great. No oh, man. Anyway, anyway, what have you been playing, Lazy Fire? Um, I just finished uh, Arkham City, uh, Saturday. Yeah. So Arkham I City have Origins. Six... What? Arkham City or Arkham Origins? Arkham City. Uh, you weren't here for it because I, I, I probably should have mentioned this before. I, Three Toes and I talked about this last week because uh, he was actually watching it, but I've been doing a Let's Play of Arkham City. It's really, oh, really good. You should watch it, Arnold. Oh, okay. See, this is actually a promotion vehicle for all my Let's Plays. Uh, so, <laughs> I get a great idea because the 60 YouTube views dollars. we might get. Oh, go ahead. I said I get a cut of your non-existent YouTube dollars. I actually did start monetizing videos with... Uh, but only after, well, only when they're like the second video since release. So, you know, if episode 13 just came out, episode 12 now has an ad on it. Uh, that, gotcha. And it's a post roll ad, so you don't even have to watch it. I don't really feel <laughs> like there's, I don't really feel like gating anyone into watching any of my stuff. Like, you should not have to deal with, like, Nokia trying to sell you a phone that you don't want if you want to watch a video about Arkham City. So. That's that's my statement on that. But yeah, I mean, I beat that uh, Saturday. Still have to go do a bunch of stuff uh, for the Let's Play on the back end of it. Uh, but 19 videos to go from beginning to end. Hmm. Uh, technically 20, really. Uh, because, it, well, 21 even, because I had a half video and all this other stuff in there. Uh, and 19, the 19th video is actually post-game Catwoman content. Had you want to watch more of that. Uh, but yeah, it, it was a, it's a fun game. I'm still kind of impressed at how bold they get at the end of that game with some of the stuff they're willing to do that completely changes the Batman world. Mm. I mean, for Batman video games. Bad. There is a really good reason why Arkham Origins is a prequel instead of a sequel. Because I don't. Uh, think... don't spoil it. Well, Batman just dies. he's dead. <laughs> Batman Snape, dies. Snape Batman kills dies. Batman. Yep. Batman dies at the end. Uh, you yep. play the next game as Robin, who has become Batman. Well, actually, actually, Robin gets hospitalized, and um, he's in a hospital, and he Batman doesn't realize that Robin's the only one that can see him. And. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a really a whole home whole uh, home almost a movie, and at the end, uh, Batman realizes he's been dead the whole time. Yeah, it's messed up, man. Uh, so yeah, I mean the game ends pretty strongly, and then you're actually sent back into the city to go do other stuff or finish up side quests and stuff. Uh, because at a certain point in the game, actually, there's a we're talking on a Sunday night. The video coming out tomorrow. And I'll send you, you know what, Three Toes, I'll send you the link now. Uh, just so you don't have to wait. But the video coming out tomorrow, actually, it, it's going to, after that point, you're pretty much gated to the end. So, 
there's nothing else you can do. You have to go right to the end of the game from there. So, yeah, but I finished that. That was a lot of fun. I've been playing some Battlefield 4 when I can. And uh, I actually bought Red Faction. Oh. Original Red Faction. It was on sale on Steam for like a buck. Steam is about wonderful. how much I would pay for Red Faction in 2013. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But it actually held up pretty okay in some spots because uh, it very clearly wanted to be Half-Life on Mars. So there's like physics puzzles. And if you remember the big thing on Red Faction was that you are able to blow up parts of the wall and environment and such. Yep. Yeah. So there are parts where that's actually still pretty cool. If you fire like straight up, and stand under the explosion, the uh, rocks will hit you and cause damage, which is something I didn't remember from the PlayStation 2 game. I might be wrong on that. Maybe that was only in PC. Um, But it's so weird to get it to actually run in uh, 1080p. I had to go download a mod (laughs) and change stuff out through that. And if you try to launch Red Faction through Steam after you've downloaded the mod, it'll go to 1080p, but it won't adjust everything correctly and then the game will crash within two minutes oops you have to run it from the mod or pc gaming yeah i mean but you're trying to play a game that's like what 11 years old or something like that now uh so what do you expect but yeah it's it's still a pretty fun game there's things like i miss like aiming down sights that you don't have anymore uh or in that game uh, but there's stuff that I would love to see in more games now, which is stuff like uh, alternate fire modes, which are pretty fun, and uh, a few other things. Uh, definitely more destruction in games like that would be pretty cool, but eh, you can only get so much. Mm. Uh, that's That's been it. I mean, I have not... I've been playing Cards Against Humanity and stuff, but that's more or less... Uh, that's a side activity. It's not video games. Please tell me you've been playing it by yourself. Yes. <laughs> it's me and all my friends, and I look down and I have painted happy faces <laughs> on all my fingers. <laughs> and gentlemen. Nice. No, I have real friends, believe it or not. <laughs> wow, I, that yeah, didn't sound desperate. <laughs> Actually, I got a. Well, there's the well, there's the title title of the episode. I have friends, believe it or not. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, it was weird. I got a, a message just before we started recording from someone I haven't talked to in ten years because they want to get a high school reunion together, and they're using the power of Facebook to do it. And uh, I'm debating on if I go and just like be a dick to everybody. Or if I just don't go and still keep being a dick to everybody on the internet. And it's it's hard to decide. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I'll make that noise the entire time. Mm. Yeah, these are my kids. I don't really fucking care about your kids. Why why, why did the government not take those away immediately? Why do you still have them? <laughs> because I went to I, high school with your dumbass. You drink mouth. I, I only do drugs that, are, that can be eliminated for... Uh... So you can pee clear within 72 hours. Yeah. And the people who are posting this fucking thing, I don't know who any of them fucking are. I have, <laughs> I don't recall them, but maybe it's because it's all girls who got married. I don't know. Very possible. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't get them. I, I didn't get them. I tenure. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why we're even discussing this now. Yeah. We're yeah, old. yeah we're, I think I'm pretty sure we're going to cut this off. <laughs> no, no. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Fuck, they almost lost done. this weekend. Well, they didn't almost lose, but they were struggling. You won. You're fine. Don't worry about it, man. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're not blinging Swing Blade into this. Don't don't start with that. Fried taters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I think we're done here. Mm-hmm. Thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, remember the Roll Tide. God damn it.